right, thank you. Hello, thanks for coming tonight, and we're taping this for those of you who couldn't be here tonight, so welcome to this meeting. Now, my name is Michael Kinnett. I'm a molecular hydration specialist, and I'm here to talk about water tonight. Now, hopefully all of you in this crowd have water. Do you have water? Yes? Okay. Now, what I want you to do is we have water in the back. I want you to try to drink three or four full glasses of water before you leave. And the reason why is because we're going to use your own body as part of the test. So we're going to do a presentation, then a demonstration. But part of the demonstration is if you will drink three or four glasses of this water tonight, you're going to see a difference in this water. Now, usually when you drink three or four glasses of water, you get that big bloated feeling that you're juggling around all the time. This water has a different molecular structure. The molecules are so small that when you drink this water, it's going to penetrate and hit your brain in the first 60 seconds. And some of you, by the glass two or three, are actually going to get a buzz. Some people say, ooh, can I have seconds? You go, yeah, you can. When you drink this water, when we take our break, we're going to do a demonstration after the presentation. I want you to get up and slosh around and see where that water went. You're going to find out it's not there. It's been absorbed in your body. And in the first 10 minutes, your body's going to really be hydrated. And that's going to cause some wonderful reactions in your body. So tonight, we're going to talk about this company, Enagic. They're a 35-year-old company out of Japan. You haven't heard of them because when they introduced it to the United States, the only people who could understand what's going on were Japanese. So I don't speak Japanese, so I wouldn't expect that you probably do either, most of you. But this company, we're going to talk about it. And we're going to start by talking about the human body and your immune system. Your immune system is so smart, it's doing these things all the time to make you stay alive, no matter how stupid you are. We all do stupid things, yes? Your immune system goes, oh, he's doing it again. Let's pull him out of the fire. And as an example, when was the last time you cut yourself and you did not stop bleeding? Well, the answer is never, or you would have bled to death. You wouldn't be here now. You'd be gone. So your immune system doesn't take any coercion. You don't have to go, stop bleeding, none of that. It's just automatically your brain kicks in and goes, I know what to do. My immune system knows what to do. And so tonight, I want you to know some of the things that we're doing. Our current lifestyle is causing our immune system major havoc. It's messing us up pretty badly, and most of us don't know it. So we're going to talk about some of these things. But I want to start off really simply, and I want you to think about your body like a fishbowl. Kind of a strange little analogy. But if I could take your body like a sponge and squeeze you out, you'd find out that your body is 70% water. That's a lot of water in your body. So here i got a fishbowl that's got 70% full of water, and my fish swimming around are just like the blood cells swimming around in my blood. So here, everything that I do in my body, like exercising or breathing or digesting or thinking or stressing, it's something's happening in my body. And think of it like when you start your car engine, you turn the key on, the fuel comes from the back of the car, goes in the engine, pistons start to fire, all these engine boom, all this energy comes out of the, out of the fuel. And then all this power comes out of the fuel, but you wouldn't get any power out of that fuel unless you had a place for the waste to go, the explosion called an exhaust pipe. So in your car, you got an exhaust pipe taking the waste out of the back of the car. So now let's do the same thing with food. I put food in my mouth, I metabolize that food, and when it goes to my stomach, my body is breaking that food down and pulling energy out just like the gasoline in the car. And every time it's making energy, your body is making waste, but the waste your body makes, every time it makes fuel, it's called acid waste. Your body's creating acid in order to pull the energy out of food. It's a chemical reaction. It's only natural. It's the only way your body can get energy out of food is by making acid waste. So the fact that your body makes acid is not a bad thing. It's how long it keeps the acid in your body becomes a problem. So we're going to talk about getting the waste out of your body. So tonight we're going to talk to you about taking these fish, and I'm going to feed them. As soon as I feed the fish, fish eat the food, and then they poop. What can they do? They, they only live in the bowl. They poop in the water, they swim around, and when I was a kid, my mom would say, Michael, go change the fish bowl. I'd go, okay, okay, mom. Of course, I wouldn't do it. I'd go home, I'd take the little fish food thing and feed them again, because it's way more fun watching the fish eat the food off the top of the water. So I'd feed them again, and the fish would poop again. And if you don't change the water in a fish bowl within a day or so, what happens to your fish? They're dead. All the fish die. Now, why is that? That's because this stuff is all acid. Their little bodies have made so much acid and they can't breathe. <gasps> they become hypoxic. There's no oxygen in there for the breathe. All this acid and they start to die. Well, your body's the same thing. Here's your blood. I got little sw cells swimming around in my blood. If I'm not changing the water in my body, and that's seven gallons a week, then what happens is my cells, just like the fish, they get sick. And if I continue with the same water in my body, 
I'm going to build up more and more acid, and then my cells die, just like the fish. So it's pretty important that you change the water. So our goal tonight is to talk about the ability for you to change your water and change your body. Now, I'm not talking about changing the amount of water you drink. You may drink from a trough every day. I don't know. But I'm talking about the kind of water you drink. You've got to change the water that goes in your body so it does something to your cells that aren't, that's not happening right now. So here's a guy you probably never heard of, Dr. Otto Warburg. Way back in 1931, this man won the Nobel Prize in Physiology. He's the guy who discovered the cause of cancer. Way back in 1931, no electron microscopes, just nothing but hard work. And even then, 1931, no one has disproven anything that he won his Nobel Prize for. Here's what he discovered. Cancer grows in oxygen-deprived acidic tissue. Every person who has cancer, breast cancer, lung cancer, liver cancer, pancreatic cancer, pick a cancer, when you test the pH of those people's body, they all have an acidic pH. Now, the flip side of that coin that won him a Nobel Prize was disease cannot live in an alkaline body. You can't get sick in an alkaline body. Won't do it. Can't do it. Wrong environment. So if that's true, and once again, no one's disproved him yet, then let's learn what acid and alkaline have to do with our health. Now, here's a pH chart. pH, you guys have all seen when, swimming, when lifeguards test pH in the swimming pool, little color things. Well, what the colors mean is this chart goes from 1 to 14. And what it's measuring is pH. pH stands for potential hydrogen. So how much hydrogen is there in different things that you're putting in your body will determine if it's acid or if it's alkaline. So let's look at this. The chart starts in the middle here, really, with a 7, which means it's neutral. It's not acid or alkaline. But it means, since I'm counting how much hydrogen there is in something, I use water, which is H2O, 2 hydrogen. So that's neutral. When I go from a 7 to a 6, that's 10 times more hydrogen or 10 times more acidic. And then once again, 6 to a 5 is 100 times more hydrogen than 1,000, then 10,000, then 100,000 times. And when I get down here to the 1, that's all hydrogen. That's like those mad scientists with test tubes doing <laughs> acid, and they're pouring it on metal, and it's melting metal. That's hydrogen, too much hydrogen. Now, when I go from a 7 to an 8, there's less hydrogen and more oxygen. And so this now goes from 10 times more alkaline or oxygen, and then 100, then 1,000, then 10,000, then 100,000. And when I get up in here... Nothing in our earth can live in a 13 or a 14. That's too alkaline. Nothing can live down here in a 1 or 2. It's too much hydrogen. Okay? So that's the chart. And everybody who has cancer of any kind, and not just cancer, they're all right in here. Everybody has a pH in the 5, 6, or lower 7 category, and those people are the ones who are getting sick. So there's a clue. If you could pick a number, you don't want to pick 5. Don't be that guy. Go be a 7 or an 8, because those people are the healthy people. Now, you have to figure out why is there a crisis in America right now with our health care, and this crisis happens to be caused by acid waste causing degenerative diseases. Now, I'll talk about disease for a second. I've got two kinds of disease. If I have the flu and I came and sat next to you for a half an hour or so, in a half an hour you wouldn't like me much. You'd be sniveling and sneezing because I could give you my contagious flu. But if I have diabetes or cancer, I could sit next to you for years, you're not catching it. No matter how much we rub or get close or I sneeze on you, you're not going to catch my degenerative disease. But since degenerative diseases are growing and growing and growing, something must be causing this. And as a matter of fact, just look at this small subset of a list of things that we call degenerative diseases in this country, and they go like this. Who recognizes anybody that has acid reflux? Who knows somebody has that? Okay? Look at this audience. A bunch of people. Well, unfortunately... Alzheimer's, ADD, allergies, arthritis. Boy, everybody knows somebody with arthritis, ADD. Back problems, cancer, cholesterol, diabetes, eczema, gastritis, gout, fibromyalgia, high blood pressure, heart disease, lupus, memory loss, mood disorders, obesity, osteoarthritis, senile dementia, on and on and on. I can go with psoriasis. I just name the list. It just keeps going and going. When you get too much acid in your body, your body starts contracting these diseases, and you can't really stop it by taking pills, because if that worked, we'd all be well. There's a million pills that just don't seem to stop these things. So here, if you have these diseases, you're going to find out it's very expensive to have this. You go to the doctor, they have a pill, they have surgery, they have something you're taking. So besides financial, emotionally, it's draining. It's sucking the energy out of your body because you're dying. Your body's dying while you're in it going, oh, man, I got to stop this. What can I do? Well, first of all, let's find out what causes this. 
America has more doctors and research and computers than anybody in the planet. We're studying more things. So if research was the answer, we Americans would be the most healthy people on earth. Nobody would be sick. In fact, we should be able to fly by now with so much research, don't you think? <laughs> but we can't because here's what we all do. We all do something called eating food. And the food we eat happens to have a direct effect or impact on the amount of acid that we have in our body. Now, I'm going to make a statement here that's going to be kind of surprising. You can be a raw foodist. You can eat nothing but leaves and the grass in your backyard, and your body will still make acid. Or you can double-size everything at McDonald's, and your body will still make acid. So no matter what you eat, your body is making acid. Does that make sense? Now, if I eat grains, it's going to make less acid than if I eat hamburger patties. Okay? But they're both making acid, so I've got to figure out how to get the acid out of my body. But what happens is when I go to the store, number one, nobody ever admits to eating fast food. I haven't yet to meet anybody. Look at this. Who eats fast food here? Oh, that's you and me. That's three of us out of this whole room. Nobody eats fast food. I don't know how, you know, it's just amazing to me that Taco Bell can stay in business because nobody eats there. <laughs> but, of course, at midnight when your friends aren't around, you're looking, no one knows me. You're snarfing tacos. You're just pounding tacos in thinking no one's going to see me eat these things. Same with Subway, same with, you know, McDonald's, all this stuff we're putting on our body. But when I go shopping, I'm not going to try to do that. I'm going to put stuff in my house that's going to be healthy for me, or so I think. So I'm going to go buy corn and blueberries and canned fruits and cranberries and just a normal flour, rice, noodles, macaroni, sugar, aspartame, which is sweetener, bread, eggs, peanut butter, milk, beer and wine, cake and ice cream, cheese, peas, beans, salad dressings, spaghetti, cereals, bacon, and oh, bacon. I could put bacon on anything. I could put, eat bacon and bacon or bacon and eggs and bacon and steak and bacon and bacon. It's like bacon to me is like the candy in the meat world. No matter what you put bacon on, it like goes good. So that's like a really yummy thing. And then, of course, there's beef and clams and fish and lamb and lobster and lunch meat, oysters, pork, salmon, sardines, sausage, shrimp, scallop, tuna, turkey, veal, cashews, chicken. All the stuff that we think is healthy for us is what we go buy. And, of course, we're trying not to fry it. We're trying to grill it, right? We're doing all the right things to make these foods. However, there's a word you have to understand tonight before you leave here. It's called homeostasis. You guys remember the story of the three, the three bears? The porridge was too hot. Too cold, and what? Just right. So I had the just right porridge. Well, your blood, when it's just right, is called homeostasis. When I measure the pH of my blood, if it's not too much acid or it's not too much oxygen, it's called homeostasis. As I eat more and more food, and I build up more and more acid, if I don't start washing the acid out of my body, then I go from homeostasis into acidosis. And acidosis means now that my healthy cells have too much acid in them, they start to morph. They start to change into a bacteria. They start to get sicker and sicker. And now, all of a sudden, I was healthy, and now I have acid reflux. Oh, my gosh, I got arthritis. How'd that happen? Gastritis, GERD, gout, obesity, high blood pressure, diabetes, eczema, cancer. The higher the acid, the worse the disease starts to grow in my body. Now, these, and I'm not telling you bacon's bad to have. I mean, I love that. Or beef. But you have to have, there's protein in that food, right? Your body has to have protein to live. You can't make enzymes without protein. You have to have it in your body. And the same thing with fish. You've got to have the omega oils. You've got to have those or your body's not going to work. So I'm not saying you can't eat it. I'm just saying when you eat it, your body's making acid. Same thing. Salmon. How bad is salmon? I mean, it's grilled. It's good. It's pink. It's yummy. Sausage, shrimp. Well, okay, sausage. We have an argument there. But, you know, <laughs> tuna, turkey, veal, and I don't know, cashews. Anybody here not like cashews? You can just sort of like graze on cashews, couldn't you? Take the whole, just sort of tie on the trough and, and just eat the whole can of cashews. It's like, ah, oh, these are so good. But I'm adding the acid contents going up and going out of homeostasis. Now, the things I eat are as bad as the things I drink. Now, all these sodas, in this very building, there's a big soda machine. Every gas station, every school, every church, you can go anywhere in this country and give to a little child, here, who wants a soda? Yeah! Do, give me a soda. All the kids go, 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 drinking soda. We said, well, we can't give them beer. We've got to give them soda. Okay, give them a soda. Okay? So they're drinking soda. Now they've got these new super sodas called energy drinks, and they have names that are like killer, like, like Monster and Hype and Red Bull and Hitman and all these things. So you turn into some sort of a monster drinking these things. More acid coming in our body. And, of course, how do you live without beer and wine? I mean, what do you drink? What do you drink? Got to have something, beer and wine, that's just part of our staple. 
But of course, I'm going to be really healthy, so I'm going to drink juice. How bad can juice be? I mean, how bad can juice be, right? It's got fruits and vegetables. Or I'm going to be even healthier. How about water? How bad is water? How many calories are in water? None. And we've all been hypnotized by the press, the media, the media. No calories is good. No calories is good. So we have no calories in water. How many calories are there in a can of Diet Coke? Zero. Hmm. They've managed to take all the evil out of soda, out of everything we eat, so we have no calories. We have diet everything, right? Diet gum and diet tea and nothing has calories anymore, so we must all be just wonderful pictures of health. That's not the picture, is it? Something's really wrong because it's not about calories. What it's about is these four minerals, calcium, magnesium, potassium, sodium. Those are called essential minerals or called electrolytes. You have to have them in your body or you will not be a healthy person very long. Now, these minerals are running around inside your body, in your blood, and you have enough minerals in your body to live to be 103 to 104 years old naturally, without pain, as long as you obey one normal rule growing up, and that is 85% of the food you have to eat is going to be fruits, nuts, seeds, grains, vegetables, and roots. Who eats that way? It's the same guys that eat fast food. Nobody. So something's going on here, isn't it? Something's going on. So let's look what happens here. This is my stomach without skin on it. When you put food in your mouth, your body makes two things. They're, they're called enzymes, amylase and lipase. And they go into the food when I'm chewing it up. And it mixes with the food. It goes in my stomach. And those two enzymes start to metabolize that food. Now, in my stomach, let's just pretend I've got McDonald's, French fries, hamburgers, crackers, cheese, uh, a soda, and um, broccoli. I actually had a vegetable. Okay. <laughs> So I've got these things in my stomach, and your stomach goes, oh, look at this mess. So your body, to pull it out, to make you well, says, let's take hydrochloric acid and pump hydrochloric acid inside your stomach. And hydrochloric acid on the pH chart happens to be 1.5. It's so acidic on that 1 to 14 chart. It's just like nuclear fuel coming into your stomach. And it's got to be because you've got all these different foods from real mushy to real solid. So it's working and melting and melting and turning it into a liquid. And when this hydrochloric acid mess mixes with the food, this stuff starts coming down and hits this little spot called the duodenum or the duodenum, depending upon where you went to med school. And what happens there, it sends a signal to your stomach. It says, stop the hydrochloric acid. Okay. And it goes to your pancreas, which is right behind your stomach, and it tells your pancreas, this second, go out to the blood and pull out these four minerals, calcium, magnesium, potassium, and sodium, and mix it into a brew, and it's called bicarbonate, HCO3. How many people have heard of bicarbonate before? Okay. Bicarbonate, like Tums and alka those are bicarbonates. Well, your stomach's been making that for a long time. And so it makes this brew out of all these minerals. And what it does, that's also called pancreatic juice. And so it then squirts pancreatic juice into this mixture. And pancreatic juice, bicarbonate, has a pH up here at 8.8, .8, really high in the pH chart. Lots of alkaline, lots of oxygen. Okay. So now it's like the mineral guys are spraying this pancreatic juice all over the food, just cooling it down. So this red-hot acid goes into like a neutral state, into the fours and fives and sixes range of pH, but your body still can't use the food yet. Before it goes into your small intestine, your small intestine has to have a pH of 8.1 or higher. So since the food's not there yet, your body goes to your gallbladder, takes some bile, it goes and squirts it right into your small intestine, and it raises the pH up to over 8.1, and now the food, which is a liquid, goes into your small intestine, and you, inside your small intestine you have little things, finger things called villi. So as the food goes through, it's sucking all the vitamin B and C and A and D and protein out, and it saves that stuff. So when you go to sleep at night, when you go to sleep, your body takes all the nutrients out and starts patching your body back up from you beating it up all day. Okay? So when you sleep, your body repairs its body. But three times a day or four times a day, depending on how often you eat, your body's going to make hydrochloric acid, and it's going to go out and make bicarbonate HCO3. It's sucking the minerals out of your body all day long. And the more acid you put in your body, the more minerals it takes to neutralize it. All day, all day, all day. Now, that's a fine thing, but there's a problem. And here's the problem. Dr. Linda Franchetta, University of California, San Francisco, has done studies on millions of people just like us who eat all the same foods we do. And she found out your body's ability to go to the blood and find calcium, magnesium, potassium, sodium, and make bicarbonate HCO3 
falls like a rock when you hit the age of 42 to 45. Your body's ability to neutralize all this acid suddenly drops dramatically and you start getting your body into an extreme state of acidosis and now you start getting things you never thought you were going to get because you've always been a healthy person. I'm always the healthy guy. They're the sick guy. I'm the healthy guy, but not now. So doctors have written books about this. I've got book after book after book that nobody reads, and you can see why. Here's Dr. Theodore Broody's book, Alkalize or Die. That sounds like a fun book, doesn't it? <laughs> Alkalize. Let's warm up at night and read Alkalize or Die. Ooh. Well, the problem is no one knows what alkalize means. They just know what die means. So I'm not going to read that book. And then the next book we got by Bob McCauley, The Miraculous Properties of Ionized Water. Well, that's great. What's ionized water? No one's even heard of it. How can it be miraculous if I don't even know what it is? Reverse aging, Dr. Sang Wang. Brilliant book. But we all disbelieve the reverse aging thing with the Fountain of Youth stories and the Ponce de Leon and all that. We think, yeah, you can't do it. wrong Oh, This book is brilliant, reverse aging, but no one thinks it's possible. The enzyme factor, Dr. Hiromi Shinya. The acid-alkaline balance diet. The secrets of an alkaline body. On and on and on. All these books nobody reads. Here's one more guy, Dr. Robert Young out of San Diego. He's written a lot of books like the pH miracle for weight loss and the pH miracle for diabetes, sick and tired. He says, without enough water, your body goes into fat storage. Hmm. Does that mean any water? No, 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 no. Drinking alkaline water is the single most healthy thing you can do. And no one's even heard of it, let alone the single most healthy thing you can do. It's an amazing thing. Now, if you had 50 pounds to lose, let's say you were 50 or 100 pounds overweight. You, at this point in your life, you have tried every diet known to man, right? You've tried the grapefruit diet, you've done the Jenny Craig diet, you've done the walk to Africa without food diet, you've done everything you can think of, you've tried everything. And especially, who remembers the Atkins diet? Was that great? All the stuff you ever wanted to eat, butter and lobster and steak in the same meal? My wife and I go down to Newport Beach and almost go into a coma eating all this. Was just... The waiters would say, you guys on a diet? Uh, uh, uh. We had butter like dripping off our face. Uh, uh. We loved that diet, it was great. And then Atkins died. It's like, ah, oh, you wrecked that diet. You can't go die, you know. <laughs> Don't do that. Jeez, that's no good. So here, if you had 50 pounds to lose and you tried everything and somebody came up to you with a straight face and said, hey, if you'll just change the kind of water you drink, you can lose that 50 pounds, you would think they were a nut job, wouldn't you? That's not true. I've tried everything. I've, I've starved myself. I've eaten grapefruit till I blow up. But if you did, if you drank different water and lost 50 pounds, would that be a miracle to you? It would, wouldn't it? And you couldn't shut up. You'd tell everybody, look, I'm a skinny person. You'd walk around telling everybody, look, 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 I lost 50 pounds. But what I'm here to tell you is what we're talking about tonight is disruptive technology. We live in a society of creative destruction. When something new comes along, it destroys the old paradigm. But the guys in the old camp don't like it. So if you go to your doctor tomorrow and say, hey, what about this alkaline water? They go, <laughs> insane. Those are snake salesmen. That's what they're doing. But I'm going to prove otherwise tonight. I'll prove to you beyond any doubt that everything I'm saying to you will affect your life in such a way that you cannot afford to be without this. There's a saying, I will live my life in such a way that I will prove by my life my critics are liars. Who likes that? Because your life is the proof of what's going on. Now, What's the solution? If I'm sick, I don't want to get sick. The solution is drinking kangen water. Kangen, that's a Japanese word that means return to origin. They're going to get your body back to the way it was when you were born. Because before you were born, you spent nine months floating around inside your mother's amniotic fluid, little kid, swimming, all alkaline water for nine months, all alkaline. You come out, doot, 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 your little alkaline child, perfect nails, perfect skin, your pH baby, hi, I'm perfect. Right? Little kids smell good most of the time. <laughs> the little bodies are all perfect, you know, just right. And then our parents spend the next year teaching us how to eat acid. And they start with something good, like they have those Gerber baby food, the carrots, and the kids go, ah. Oh, how about this? How about a cookie? Um, 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 um. So we start teaching the kids, eat acid. Here, eat this, eat this. How about this? And pretty soon, kids start to pork up. Who is porking up nicely? The kids, you know? <laughs> Can I hold your child? Whoa, 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 this kid's a big one. <laughs> and we so believe in acid, we actually have National Acid Day. It's called Halloween. 
<laughs> All the little kids go out and trick or treat with, you know, like pillow bags full of candy. If someone gives them an apple, they go, apple, what are you, a nut? I want Snickers. Give me acid, give me acid, give me acid. Because we learn how to eat that because we love. Now, why does this water work? Because it removes the acid waste in your blood cells by just changing your water. And I'll show you that in another picture in a second. Also, it detoxifies your body inside your colon. Your colon is the little, it's the, the little keeping trap of all the poison in your body. All the stuff that's poisonous is living in your colon. If you don't get rid of that, you're not going to get rid of being sick because your sickness, your disease has to feed on something. And that's, that's the lunch wagon right there inside your colon. And the third thing it's going to do is it's going to superhydrate your tissue. Now, your bone marrow is the manufacturing plant for your entire immune system. It makes T cells, B cells, stem cells, red cells, white cells all come out of your bones. And if you are 1% dehydrated, which is so easy to be, you're going to have a 5% decrease in your cognitive functions. You're walking around going, what? Ever walk in, you're like standing in the front of the refrigerator door going, what was I doing here? <laughs> right? Or you're standing by the bathroom going, I'm hungry. <laughs> right? You're not quite there. You're dehydrated. Your brain is dehydrated. And by the way, your brain is the first place to get water when you consume water, hydrate your body. So when you have a migraine headache, you're in serious trouble because the first place to lose water is your skin. You get dry skin. Second place is your organs. They give it up. Third place is your brain. When your brain is dehydrated, you're getting a severe migraine headache. And we were down in Scottsdale a couple weeks ago doing a presentation. We had this new doctor clinic down there, which is now carrying our water. And the main doctor had a severe migraine headache, and he came. He says, oh, man, they had a brand new wellness opening, all these new clients. He says, I got a migraine. I said, man, come here. Drink this water, 15 minutes, go in the room. Now, of course, I gave him a shot of 11.5. <laughs> and in 15 minutes, this man's back online. He came back online. He was hydrated immediately. You've got to stay hydrated. Now, if, it wasn't, if I discovered the, the cure of cancer for everyone on the earth, and it costs $15 million per pill, but it guaranteed to cure cancer, how many people could afford that cure? Not everybody, would they? Some rich people could get it, but if something's going to be a solution, it has to be affordable. It has to be affordable. So this is the most affordable solution for everybody in the room and everybody you know is drinking this water, and I'm going to show you why. Now, people say, how do you know this, Michael? How's this true? This water has been served in the top Japanese hospital since 1974. For 35 years, this is the water. Now, you know, when you check into a hospital, you put those ugly robes on and your butt's hanging out. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> if you go to a doctor in Japan and say, doctor, with your little ugly robe on, say, I'm pretty thirsty. Can I have a Coke? The doctor goes, Coke, no Coke. You go, geez, easy, man. How about milk? No milk. How about tomato juice? No tomato juice. How about water? He goes, Kangen. You're drinking Kangen water. In Japan, it's the opposite way. Now, look at this. For thousands of years, the Japanese have been laughed at by Western medicine called allopathic medicine. They've been doing things like yin and yang and herbs and spices and meditation and acupuncture and acupressure and all the stuff our doctors go, that's not medicine, that's voodoo. If you try to get your chiropractor to cover your insurance for, I mean, your insurance company to cover your chiropractic five years ago, they would say, no. That's not medicine. Those are bone crackers. Those aren't doctors. Those are, that's a different thing. We don't think they're doctors. But everybody went, fine, I don't care. I'm paying for it myself. We went around our doctor. Everybody has chiropractors now. And guess what? We're all walking around touching our toes going, hey, chiropractor's good. <laughs> and guess what? Your insurance company is what? They're paying for a chiropractor, aren't they? Same thing with acupuncture, isn't it? Used to be they laughed at acupuncture, but not anymore. Because if you've gone there, you find out they have a science behind what's going on. They know what's going on. Yep, they can put something here in your, your knees better. I don't know how they do it. <laughs> but they know all these little meridians in your body and touch this, and that starts to fix. So what I'm saying is this, for thousands of years, has been laughed at by Western medicine. Whereas in the West, we have this whole eat, drink, and be merry. Yee-hoo! New shots and party and yay and go and oh. When we get the big one, we dial 911 and woo, and they come in and they go boom, trying to keep you alive. Right? And if you survive that experience, then you get to go to your doctor and have a talk about, what's wrong with me? Treat my symptoms. Right? And of course, we all want the fat one. Can you guys get the, can you suck the fat out, get that thing, <laughs> suck fat out here and suck fat out here and suck fat out here, right? Because that's the fast way to get well. Just suck it off. <laughs> I feel better. Right? And all of us do this about three times a day in the mirror. I think I look pretty good this way. <laughs> you think, you know? 
<laughs> you think if I just pinch my ears together in the back, you like do that, you know? <laughs> oh yeah, pull up like that, you know? Hey, so we all have these ways to think. I think I look pretty good this, you know, this way. But this is the American way of treating symptoms. Now, how's it been working out? Let's just compare the two. This is the United Nations Worldwide Life Expectancy Chart. Who lives the longest in the whole world? And I want to tell you the answer is Japanese. The Japanese outlive everybody. Well, who's second? Hong Kong. Who thinks of Hong Kong as being the healthiest place on earth? It just doesn't come to mind for me. I'm for something, something's wrong. We are all the way down here, way below Puerto Rico, Cuba. We're below Cuba, we're number 38 below Cuba, but we do outlive the Somalis. <laughs> Those are the pirates. <laughs> We're taking sharpshooters and taking them out, and they're still living longer than us. So there's something wrong with this picture. And I'm not making this up. This is Time Magazine. The sorry state of American health, they say, despite advances in medicine, Americans are less healthy than we used to be, and the next generation may even be worse off. Isn't that wonderful news? Just makes you warm and fuzzy, doesn't it? Just thinking your child will be sicker than grandpa soon. That's just a nice thing. Now. You're going to go home tonight. The person who invited you here has information for you. And we want you to go to the website, Future Foundation Water, and look at what we've got there for you to see. There's a whole plethora of information to train you and teach you what this does and send your friends there so they can see it. But we've got clinical studies. I've got 36 new clinical studies where we test everything from human beings to babies to rats to mice to chickens to egg production to you name it, alkaline versus acid, and there's no contest in any field ever. But that's not enough. Doctors say, nope, this is still snake oil. However, scientific articles, demonstrations, movies, I want you to be aware of this. Product comparisons. Do not fall for this. The Internet is full of tricky people who take our information off our website. They copy it. They change a couple of words. And instead of saying Enagic, they call it Jupiter. And in fact, we have a lady who's doing comparisons. She'll ch challenge anybody who has another machine, come set it side by side with Enagic, and let it work side by side all day long and make as much water as our machine will side by side, and not one machine will last. It will all burn out within four hours. It's over. It's melted. It's dead. No comparison. But on the Internet, it says we're the same company, but they're not. Those are all made by a company called Emco out of Korea. They're a licensed ice maker. They make shave ice machines. They make Zambonis. They make refrigerators. Okay? Oh, and they'll make an ionizer. We can start our own company, and they'll put your name on their ionizer, it's not a medical device. It's a household appliance. So I just don't want you to be fooled. On the product comparison, we take the little hunks of junk apart and show you what's in theirs versus ours. But I still will lose 10% of you. 10% of you will still go buy the wrong machine, and you'll call me in six months and say, hey, I've been scammed. This doesn't work. And I say, no, I told you that six months ago. Don't fall for it, OK? So be aware of that. Now, also get your free ebook. Put your email letter. Tell you, it'll send you a book. Tells you what this water does and why it does it. Now, let's talk about this water. Cellular repair. Remember the story of the birds and bees? A sperm and an egg hit, then there's one cell, then there's two, then there's four. Pretty soon there's a baby. Well, your bodies are still replicating. Now, you're not pregnant tonight, or maybe, <laughs> but your body is still making new cells. Every 60 seconds, your body's making 200 million new cells. No wonder you're so tired. <laughs> 200 million every 60 seconds, okay? It's repairing the ones that are blown up, put new ones in, old ones out, new ones in. Now, in the medical Western mind, we've all been hypnotized by TV to think if I get sick, I got to go get a pill. If I'm sick, I got to get surgery. If I'm sick, I got to get a pill. But I'm not doing that. Think about this. If I have a cell and they're all dividing every day, every day they're all dividing, every dividing. If I get a cell that has cancer, what's going to happen when that cancer cell divides into two? Now I have two cancer cells, don't I? If I keep pouring acid on these cancer cells, next time those divide, I now have four really sick cancer cells, then 16, then a million Sick, sick, sick cells. Every time the cells divide, they get sicker and sicker. Or I can change the environment. I can change the acid into alkaline. When I start pouring alkaline on it, now my sick cancerous cell divides. But now, since cancer, degenerative disease, can't live in an alkaline body, that cell's not quite so bad. Then it divides again, more acid, more acid out, more alkaline in. Now it gets healthier and healthier and healthier. And pretty soon, the disease is gone. It's gone. They're dead. They're out of the body. And so look at every 36 hours, my intestines make new cells. So in a matter of a couple of weeks, I got a brand new intestine. Or I can have the same old sick one just making cancer, making cancer, or make new ones. What do you want, new or old? What do you think? It's as easy as drinking new water, don't you think? 
How about my white blood cells? 13 days. Red blood cells, 120 days. Liver cells, 500 days. So in a year and a half, I got a new liver. All the alcohol I've strained through this one can be repaired. <laughs> that is really good news, I can tell you that. <laughs> so I don't have to keep the same broken body, the sick body. I can keep my body repairing and mending itself as long as I keep my body in homeostasis. I don't get too acidic because if I do, I'm in trouble. Now, drinking Kangen water can produce a dramatic effect on cellular repair, allowing the body to heal itself. That's what you need. You don't need a doctor. You need body to heal itself. Now, let's talk about this water. Why is this so unique? What's so cool about it? There's three things. Microclustered molecules. No one knows what that means, so let's start with that. Microclustered molecules means 100 years ago, our ancestors could go outside, take a big bucket to a river, scoop up the water, and drink it. Go, 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 go. Healthy. H2O. Today, who in their right mind would go outside, find a river or a stream, take a bucket, look at it, and go, Cook, 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 cook. You wouldn't know it, man. You're a nut. You're, you'd be crazy. I live in Aliso Viejo. It's like living in Mayberry. All the houses are the same. The, the streets are like nine lanes wide. There's no crime. And so I run five miles a day. I'm running down Aliso Creek every single day. And there's signs by the creek that says, don't drink, don't wade, don't breathe, don't throw rocks in here, don't get close to this water. It's toxic, right? My dog's running with me. She wants to jump in the water. It's like, no, you'll melt. Don't get in there. Don't, don't, don't do it. Don't do it. She's going to go down. Well, now because we live in a society where government's taking care of everything for us, oh, I'm so grateful. <laughs> then what happens is this. They take and put things in the water because now we can't drink the water. So what they do is the first thing, they take in the plant, they filter this somewhat, and they say, okay, let's put chlorine in the water to kill the bacteria. So here... Microclustered molecules happens when you add chemicals to water. Molecules now stick together in a cluster called a microclustered molecule, I mean a bulk water molecule, and bulk water has 24 to 26 molecules stuck together in a big magnetic clump. And that's bad because your body has 80 trillion cells, and every single cell there's a little electronic barrier called interstitial fluid which keeps germs and bacteria out of your blood, out of your cells. Now, your blood has two parts, called intercellular and extracellular. Intercellular is supposed to be 60% of the fluid in your blood is supposed to be inside the cell, 40% is supposed to be outside the cell, and that's the way it's supposed to work, but I have a problem. The water I'm using to get fluid into my cells, my body can't absorb. When I use this man-made blob thing we call water, when it comes to the interstitial fluid, the DNA in your cell says, and what are you? And it says, I'm water, just like land shark. You go, you're not water. What are you? I'm water. No. This water can only, your cell will absorb 17.5 to 20% of that fluid in your body. So your cells are extremely dehydrated, and that's a problem because every time you eat food, it's making acid. It's storing the acid inside your blood cell. So now my blood cell, the acid keeps going higher and higher, more acid, which means my pH keeps getting lower and lower and lower. I get out of homeostasis. I now go into acidosis. I go into extreme acidosis, and my body starts just deteriorating rapidly in all that acid. Now, What's the solution? Well, Enagic takes this big, fat, bulk water molecule, runs it through a medical device, a licensed medical device, which has seven titanium plates, and each plate is seven inches by five inches. When I take this microcluster, this bulk water through here, it pulls the blob apart, and the microprocessor in our computer builds it back into a microclustered, very small, tiny molecule, and it comes out looking like nature makes water. Have you ever seen a snowflake? Okay. They're all hexagonal. It has six points. Well, this is very tiny. I got little tiny molecule clusters, molecule clusters. Outside, I have an electron on the outside of each one. These are very tiny. Now, when I take fluid into my cells, these little microcluster molecules, they penetrate the cell. I can take a nuclear magnetic resonance scanner and measure how fast it penetrates the cell. I get 600% more penetration with this than I do that. So immediately, my cells are filling up with fluid and I'm washing the acid out of my body. So I'm lowering the pH, I'm lowering the acid, I'm raising the pH because I'm putting alkaline in and acid's going out. Now, if you understand all that, good job because it's pretty confusing with the break, but once I get the acid out of my cell, now I can start to get healthy. Here's why. This acid that goes out has three ways to get out of your body. Way number one, once it's out of your cell, it comes through your kidneys and out through your urine. That's way number one. So you're going to the john and this big pile of acid's going, ah, it's coming out. 
Way number two, I'm breathing CO2 mixes with H2O, becomes carbonic acid. So now the way number two acids leave up every time I breathe, which is why you run, you're taking a lot more oxygen in, you're getting a lot of, a lot of acid when you're running, okay? So third way is when I sweat, I'm getting acid on my skin, which has got a pH of 5.5. And all of you people that go to estheticians, they put the, the toners on your skin, that all has a pH of 5.5, which tightens your skin, which is the same pH as your skin, which is acid on your skin. So once I start getting it out of my body, I can lower my acid content, and then my body can start getting well again. But I gotta get it out of the cells first. Now, I tell you that story about the cells because you understand, this guy, Dr. Hiromi Shinya, figured this out, how to use that science. In 1961, he's a young doctor. His wife and two children were very sick. In fact, so sick, his wife died. Couldn't save her life. He didn't want his kids to die. Didn't know what was going on. He's the man who then invented a way to look inside the colon without cutting you open. It's called the colonoscopy. He was able to look inside of his children's colon and found out they had this extremely acidic condition called lupus. He changed the pH. The kids lived, they're alive today by changing the pH in the colon. Now, since that time, he's done over 300,000 colonoscopies and currently professor of surgery at Albert Einstein College of Medicine. Doctors and surgeons are different. If you call a surgeon a doctor, they're insulted. He's one of the top 10 surgeons in the world. He's also a chief of endoscopy at Beth Israel Medical Center in New York City, and he believes that all degenerative disease originates in the colon from eating a poor acidic diet. All degenerative disease originates in your colon. If you check into his clinic, you must agree to drink Congan water or he, you're not coming in. He has 300,000 patients, not one single recurring case of cancer. Who thinks that's astounding? 300,000 to none, okay? That's huge. Now, now the second thing is antioxidant, anti-inflammatory. And you know what this word kind of means, so let's talk about it. In practical application, when you cut open an apple, you see it turn brown, it's rusting. That's called oxidizing, just like a steel fence or a pipe will rust. Things in the air are oxidized, and those things are called free radicals. Now, a free radical is not a scary thing. A free radical, in this air, there is oxygen, lots of oxygen. 2% of the oxygen molecules have lost an electron, and they're now called a free radical. When a molecule of oxygen loses an ox uh, electron, it's now out looking for its lost electron because it's out of balance, and it finds pollution and germs and disease and gloms onto them and neutralizes the air so we don't get sick breathing the air. When a free radical goes inside my body, however, and they do, what happens is it's still looking for an electron, so it'll find an electron in my healthy lung tissue, pull him off, and now he's a free radical eating the next healthy guy next to me, next to me. So I have something else degenerating inside my body. So I can let that happen. My body ages. I rust. My skin gets old. My body starts to decrepitate. And so what happens is I can now take this Kangen water, this microcluster molecule, bombard my body inside this glass. I have literally millions and millions and millions of electrons, extra electrons, waiting to neutralize these free radicals. These are donors. They donate the electron to these free radicals saying, hey, and once they join up, they become happy little oxygen molecules that are bioavailable, and oxygen molecules are alkaline. See how that works? So I'm now adding more alkalinity by neutralizing the free radicals. And if you don't believe this, just take a digital photo of yourself tonight when you go home, stick it on your laptop, and then wait, wait three or four, just wait 90 days. Take a picture of yourself again, put it side by side, and your neighbors will say, did you have a face? What'd you do? You know, no, 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 you did too, what happened? Because your skin will actually improve. It reverses that aging process. You're not, you're not oxidizing like a fence inside and outside your body. Now, when it sees an apple, these free radicals are going, look at those electrons. They're ripping electrons off as fast as it can, just eating them, turning it brown right in front of your eyes. That's exactly what's happening to your skin and your body inside and outside, okay? Now, what does this mean? It means I'm going to prove this to you with an electronic measuring device that measures how fast electrons get sucked off your body with different liquids. And it's easy to do. We're going to test soda. We're going to test tap water, bottled water, purified water. And this ORP means oxidation and reduction potential. What's the potential for this liquid to reduce the electrons in my body? Because if it's reducing them, I'm getting old, right? If it's adding them, I'm getting aged back. It's like making a deposit to my body. Everybody knows what an EKG is. It's an electronic thing. It measures your body has electricity in it, okay? So you have to have electrons for your body to work, or you can't communicate. Your brain doesn't work. Your eyes can't see. Electrons are what moves back and forth. That's why people with MS have a breakdown in their functions and their ability because the electrons get eaten by this little thing called a mylar sheath, and MS means multiple scars. The acid's eating away at that little mylar sheath, and they start deteriorating. 
You have to be making electron deposits in your body to stay healthy. You have to. So drinking these are going to suck electrons out of my body at age. But when you were a kid, when you were sick, your mom said take vitamin C, right? Everybody's taking vitamin C? How come? Vitamin C is an antioxidant, which means it's adding electrons. How many? Well, it's a minus 50, which means it's adding 50 millivolts of electron every second. Adding, ah, making a big deposit. If you've ever bounced a check, you know what happens if you don't make deposits, right? <laughs> Boing, ooh, same thing. So by the time you're like 40 years old, all your electrons burn up. Now you're like, you just turn old real fast at 40. All you can do is bowl. You know, okay, I got like one speed, that's it. And you're trying to use the, the ball, the handle, the ball handle. Can't even use the finger grip. You're out of electrons. But vitamin C, green tea, green tea's better. It's a minus 80. It's making a bigger deposit. That's why the Japanese are so healthy. Green tea, green tea, green tea. This water coming out of the machine will come out as a minus 200 on a bad day and minus 850 on a good day. And the water tonight, I tested before I put it in here. And by the way, it's losing power sitting in the container. As it sits here, it's losing power. Okay? How come? Because carbon dioxide can penetrate this plastic just like it does through anything. And it turns it, and it mixes with the calcium here. It makes calcium carbonate. And that's why you get the white stuff in the bottom sometimes, because it's mixing with, with carbon dioxide. So it's eating up my electrons in there as it sits there. That's why they don't bottle this. That's why they sell you the machine to drink it fresh out of the machine. However, this water comes out. There's no thing you can put in your body that's going to make you healthier faster, because these electrons are absorbed right, right now. The third thing is called alkalinity. I showed you this chart before. This is the pH chart from 1 to 14. All hydrogen, all oxygen, neutral. If I ask you what your body temperature is when you're healthy, everybody here could say 98.6. We all know that answer, right? However, the truth is your body when it's really healthy is 98.6 to 104. That's the range. Because when you get sick and you get a bacteria in your body, the first thing that happens is the white blood cells come out and try to take the bacteria out, and there's heavy casualties on both sides. They both die trying, and when cells die, they turn into more acid. So that's, that's a point for the bad guys. You get more acid in your blood. So your temperature, your body says, okay, I'm going to kill that bacteria. So what it does is it takes your temperature from 98.6 to 99 to 100, 101, 102, 103, 104, 104. The bacteria gets baked off, gets cooked, and it dies. And then your temperature, the white cells come out and take the dead cells away. And then your temperature goes 104, 103, 102 back to 98.6. So you're healthy between that range. But if you go to 105 or 106, if your kid gets sick and gets a fever that high, what's the doctor tell you to do? <laughs> Stick him in a bathtub in ice cubes, turn them in freezing water, don't drown them, but keep them frozen. Because your body cannot go above that without going to a coma and die. Your kids will die if they get too hot. Right? So here's something. Remember the word homeostasis? Homeostasis says right here, the arterial blood pH, when they measure the acid and alkaline balance in your blood, in your arteries, it has to be right here in this green edge. It's got to be between 7.365 and 7.45. Well, that's hardly any difference at all. Just like a tenth of it. What? That's nothing. Guess what? There's 65% more oxygen in your blood at 7.45 than there is at 7.365. And that's the range of health. Now, if you don't get the acid out of your cells, your acid content is going to drop from 7.365 to 7, down to 6, 6.5, down 5.5, 5. And, half, five. and the way to find out, you guys ever heard of urine strips, those little pH tests? Most people use them wrong. To use them right, you're supposed to give your kidney six hours to process the food you had for dinner last night. Otherwise, it's not going to get the right potential, the uh, potassium to uh, protein ratio. But if you wait six hours from the time you take your last test or go to bed, wake up, your first urine, you run the strip through it, you then put it on tissue so it doesn't drip. Then you look at the color chart, and if it's down here between five and six, check into the hospital. You've got extreme acidosis. You are heading that way fast if you're not already there. You're really sick and it just hasn't hit you yet. You haven't hit that tipping point yet, but it's coming. It's coming fast. If you're between five and a half and six and a half, you still are very acidic, not quite as bad. If you're between six and a half and seven and a half, you're in homeostasis. That's what you want it to be, six and a half, seven and a half. If you're over seven and a half or eight, you're really sick. You're not getting too much oxygen. You know how when you go into a senior citizen and you walk in the old folks' homes, it smells like ammonia? Ever smell that? You think these people are clean freaks around here, man. No, that's not it. When your body is running out of minerals, when you keep eating acid, 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 your body has to find minerals. So the first thing it does, let's go through here. As I make hydrochloric acid, my body goes out to my duodenum and stops the hydrochloric acid, goes to my blood to find calcium, magnesium, potassium, sodium. 
It goes to your blood. It says, I'm sorry, you have burnt that up years ago. You're now 55 years old. You haven't had minerals in your blood for a long time. So the next thing it does to neutralize the acid, it then goes to your bones and starts sucking the calcium out of your bones and your teeth and your hair. It's taking all the minerals it can to neutralize that acid in your body. Understand how that works? That's why you get osteoporosis. Your bones just snap. Ooh, all the calcium's gone. The minerals has gone. Well, the next thing that happens is your body says, okay, I'm going to take the acid that's in your blood that I can't neutralize. I'm going to now turn it from a liquid into a solid, and that's like salt. It's called uric acid, little salt crystals, uric acid in your blood. And those are solid little crystals, and the pH is still 1.5. It's a nuclear radiating little plant in your blood sending out 1.5 acid waves, and your blood's going down lower and lower. So it says, wait, 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 quick, get this out of the blood. So it sends it away from your blood and puts it into your knuckles, in your joints, in your back, and you get arthritis. It sends it to your big toe, and you get gout. Isn't that neat? Just takes it out of your blood. and start. Now your body's going, oh, my gosh. Meanwhile, it sucked all the minerals out of your backbone, so you're getting all this punched over look. Ooh, yeah, I'm feeling good now. So it starts depleting the minerals in your blood, and that's still not enough. So the next thing it does, it starts going to your body and taking fat and wrapping this acid crystal up in cholesterol, so you end up with a little acid grenade that's now covered with fat to keep that pH out of your blood. Because if it goes much lower, you're going to a coma, you're going to die. Your body goes, nope. The immune system's got all these tricks to keep you alive in spite of what you're doing to yourself. And then it takes these fat clumps and starts sticking it on your butt and your legs and your thighs and your stomach. So you're going, happy birthday to me. <laughs> Walking around, feeling great. You say, but wait, my grandfather, he's old and he's sick, but he's not fat. That's because he's one of the people that they don't take the acid and wrap it in fat and put it inside your butt. They stick it inside your artery. So now you get atherosclerosis and your blood pressure goes off the chart. It's like just climbing a flight of stairs. <laughs> Because these little tiny arteries can't take it anymore. Full of little acid grenade clumps. If you will just drink this water. That's all I'm saying. Drink this water. Try it. Just try it. Even if you're grumpy, it'll work. <laughs> take this water. Put calcium, magnesium, potassium, sodium back into your blood. Just by drinking the water. Okay? Your, your colon's going to get clean, whether you like it or not. doesn't matter. It's going to go do what it's going to do because your immune system goes, I have something to work with. So these... Minerals help restore the essential alkaline buffers your body has to have to get back to homeostasis, and that's what your health is all about. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we poured samples of different liquids, common liquids that you know, from soda to tap water. And I have a little meter called an ORP meter, oxidation reduction potential. It's going to measure how fast it's reducing the oxidation, pulling electrons off your body or adding them. So it's sort of like a golf score. The higher the score, the worse it is for you. So here I'm going to start over here with this end with soda. I'm going to turn this meter on. And I'm not sure if the camera guys can zoom in on this, but they can see that's in the 7 to 800 range, let's say. He's in the 660 range. So he's got a real high positive ORP, which means it's sucking 660 millivolts of electrons off your body every second. That's pretty fast. Now, when I put it in, in Propel, which is like all sports drinks, it drops to the 400s pretty quick. It's like 443. I hope the camera guy can see that. So you can see it's in 400s. About half as high, but still horrible for your body. Then I'm going to put it into... Um, Pellegrino, and we picked Pellegrino because the doctors prescribed Pellegrino for the children that have autism. And so we wanted to see what that did. And so this number, you can see this is in the 393, 394, 396. He's going back up over 400. So it keeps going up and up. He'll hit about 450. We'll let him sit there long enough. But we haven't had time. So he's up to 410, 411. Now I'm taking him out of Pellegrino, and I'm going to put it into Aquafina. And you can see this water appears up to 425. We'll stick it into Aquafina, and Aquafina, he's up to 414, 418. He's going to climb like a little rocket ship here. I'm not sure if that camera guy can see that either. But it's in the 420s. He'll go up to 450. This is made by Pepsi. This, oh, do we switch these around here? Uh, yeah, let's, this, I, want, I want Dasani next. So Dasani is made by Coca-Cola. It's also reverse osmosis. These waters are both banned in Japan as poison, toxic. You can't get them there. So here's up to 452 and climbing. 
Here's Dasani, our wonderful healthy water here, 446, 445. So he's in the 400 and looks like he's holding at 445 positive ORP, sucking electrons out of my body, but it's got a real cool schmancy little name. So let's drink that. Now, Penta, this is $3.35 for this bottle of junk. And they tell you it's healthy because it's expensive. And so here I put this in that water. You can see he starts at 458, 450, 463, 467, 470, 472. He's climbing. He'll go to 500. So pay a lot to get sick, okay? Pay more so you can get sicker. Now, we'll see how smart smart water is. So he's up to 485 and still going up, but let's just take the next one here. So here I'm at 478, 471, so he's in the 460s. So this is still in the category between 800 and 400 in the positive ORP, sucking electrons out of your body. Now, this is tap water, which I made about probably three hours ago. We got here about 5 o'clock and set up. And you'll see tap water approved by the EPA to the big surprise of no one. This comes in at 422. So he's, is he going up or down? 403, 400. So he's in the 390s to 400 range. Not good. Now, here's Kangen water, three hours old. What's going to happen to this water? Here, I'm going to put this in here. It's hard to see. But right away, I want the cameraman to focus that. This says minus 724. Minus 744. It's a negative 724. It's adding a zillion electrons every millisecond to your body. As fast as you can put them in, just drink it. It's just making this huge electron deposit to your body. And that's going to be the antioxidant factor to neutralize the free radicals in your body. What's he at now? He's up to minus 726 and still going up. All positive except for Kangen water. Okay? Now, this guy has nothing to prove. You buy him at a fish supply store because you don't want to kill a $700 fish anymore and you want to kill a 50 cent fish, but you want to know what's in the ORP of your expensive fish water. Now, the next thing I'm going to do, Galen's going to get a book and show you that when we put these drops, this is called phenol red. Phenol red is the stuff they put in the swimming pools. And what this does is it's going to measure how much hydrogen there is or how much oxygen there is. By the way, my lovely wife, Galen, thank you. Big round for Galen tonight here. Yes, sir. Now, when you find a lot of hydrogen or acid in this liquid, it's going to be bright orange or bright yellow. That means lots of hydrogen, lots of acid. If it's got oxygen in it, it's going to be in the purple range, okay? So this is going to be looking for hydrogen or oxygen. So she's going to stir these up, and I'm going to put a few drops in each one of these and try to do like the same number of drops in each one here so we can get the same. And you'll see what it's doing here is it's looking for hydrogen or looking for oxygen. And you'll see, since we just came out of Easter egg season here, we got all different kinds of colors, which means we got all different kinds of hydrogen amounts in our, in our liquid. So starting off with the ones that they advertise the most, we're going to start off with soda. And this is the same as Pepsi. If it says diet, it's way worse than just regular soda. How can something be way worse? But it is. You can see there's nothing redeeming about that. It's got a horribly high ORP, and it's got a horribly high... Hydrogen content, all acid. This is all the sports drinks, Red Bull, Propel, Gatorade, all in the same highly acidic condition. Here's the stuff that the poor little children have Alzheimer's are being fed. Once again, excuse me, autism. What did I say? <laughs> Alzheimer's. So children with Alzheimer's, I've got it, see? <laughs> so here, this is taking the poor little children with autism and putting more acid in the brain, which is the last thing they need. And then here, this is the wonderful, you're standing on the treadmill in the club, getting healthy, drinking alkaline water, I mean, drinking all this aquafina, sucking the oxygen, sucking the minerals out of your body, getting sicker drinking this than if you hadn't had any, because that's just pure. This is our wonderful Pepsi product. Here's our Coke product. Same acid. Now, take a look at this. This is really great advertising. They put a purple alkaline label on this, charge three times as much as anybody else, and they're selling the same acid as everybody else but they're getting three times the money. So these guys are just brilliant marketers, but see, we think if it's expensive, it's got to be good, and because it's got the purple cap, i got to buy that. Now, smart water, how smart is this? Well, this is green, and you think, well, that's pretty neutral, but there's two types of minerals in the world. There's organic and inorganic. Your body can only absorb organic, which is a plant-based mineral. They go by 
all the inorganic minerals, which means you can get a dump truck load full of minerals, which are, in, which are inorganic. Your body can't absorb it, but it's like taking baking soda and adding it to the acid. It'll change the pH so it looks more neutral, but it's no more beneficial, as you noticed. It still had a real high positive ORP, like in the 450 range. Now, here's tap water. You say, well, this is the best number yet. That's because in all 50 states, it has to be alkaline. It's got to be the 6.8 to 7.2 range by law. Now, I'll test this in a second later, but you'll see that's got all kinds of wonderful chemicals in there. Here's our beautiful Kangen water, bright oxygen purple with a negative 700 ORP. You just, it doesn't get any better. You can't buy anything on the planet that's any better, more affordable or practical to change your health than this glass right here. Now, the interesting thing is you've all been taught, change your diet, change your diet. Don't eat this. Don't eat fat. Don't do this. Don't do meat. How about this? Change your water. Let's just change my water, okay? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take wonderful purple positive, negative ORP water. I'm going to put it into my sick little body that's been eating grilled chicken for the last 10 years, which is still acidic, and I'm going to say, how about if I just change my water, it'll change my body? Does that make sense? Just change your water, it'll change your body. Same thing's going to happen here. Change your water. Let's actually turn him purple for a second. Let's hit the table. Just turn them all purple. Now watch, with, I'm going to do this slower. You can see it starts to turn purple. It goes back to blue. So let's try it again. Nope, I'm still staying blue. I'm going to stay here. I'm going to stay blue. So I'm just going to stay blue. Okay, so here, let's go back and get this guy to go blue here, or purple. Okay, now, here's soda. I'm drinking soda. I'm going to just change my water, but I'm going to keep drinking soda. What happens to me? Nothing, absolutely nothing. This is so toxic, the number one killer of children under 14 is now cancer because they think this is fun. They sell this at churches. They sell this in garage sales. And here's all the sports drinks. They got photos of Kobe Bryant selling this on TV, making $300 million a year, and the kid says, well, gee, if it's good for him, I'm good for me. Doesn't change it. So acidic, can't touch it. Here's our poor little Alzheimer's children, excuse me, the <laughs> autistic children. <laughs> I'm back. Okay. <laughs> the parents of the children who have autism see this and they go, oh my gosh, this water's going to work. But it doesn't. It just keeps going and going and going. It's so acidic that what happens is once you start drinking this water and you get your body in the alkaline state, you're going to start getting better. You will feel a difference. You will go through a detox. You will go through a detox. You'll get lightheaded. You might get a headache. Depending on the power of water you start with, Elvis may leave the, body, the building right now, just coming out. But if I take this and say, I just have to have a soda. I miss how it burns going down my throat. There's a clue, huh? <laughs> you take it and add acid to these drinks. After you've turned your body into alkaline state, even diluted soda, it's going to take your little healthy body and take you right back into acidosis, except for tap water. He's going to turn him back in the blue or get him to go. And here, here's diluted sports drink, even straight congen water. Can't resist. Can't resist. So here's the rule. If you're going to drink this water, and I hope you do, you must give up these drinks. You cannot drink soda. You can't drink soda even one day, even one week, one month. You can't have it. Get it out of your body. Just look at it and say, this is killing me. Every time I take a hit of this, it's killing me. It's reversing all the good you're doing. But if you get rid of this, this will work like crazy on your body. Now, the, while Galen's cleaning these off, I'm going to show you something really neat. Here, I'm going to take tomatoes, which are cherry tomatoes, and I'm going to do what everybody does when they buy fruits and vegetables from the store. I'm going to wash them in tap water. So here's tap water. And then now... This machine makes seven powers of water. This one is 11.5. So you're drinking eight and a half. This is nine and a half. There's 10 and a half and 11 and a half. So this is 100,000 times more oxygen in this water than there is in the, in the tap water that you're drinking every day. Now, people say, well, can you drink this? Yep. Tastes horrible. <laughs> but you can drink it. Now, I'm going to pour this 11.5 water on this, these tomatoes. I'm going to let them, they're pretty full, aren't they? I've got them a little over, I'm overzealous here. Now, while they're doing that, I'm going to show you something really extremely fun. 
I'm going to take um, sesame oil, which is dark oil, and any oil will work as an experiment. I'm just going to show you because it's nice and dark. You can see it. And I'm going to pour a little bit in here, and I'm going to pour a little bit in here. And then I'm going to show you, once again, science. I feel like Mr. Rogers sometimes, you know. And look at this, children. You take <laughs> tap water, mix it with oil, and when you mix oil and water, what happens? It doesn't mix. It separates because oil and water don't mix in any book anywhere because I've got big, fat bulk water molecules clumped together, and I get big, fat oil molecules, and they're both trying to share the same space and not going to do it. However, when I take wonderful 11.5 conkin water with lots of oxygen in it, what's going to happen is I take this same oil with water that came out of the same sink, and now it just absolutely emulsifies it. You're seeing oil and water mix. You've never seen that in your whole life, and there it is. And you can't fake this. Do it now. I'm not, it's nothing I can do it. <laughs> it just does it. That's what it's going to do, you know? So now the practical application of that is when I take tap water and try to clean my fruits and vegetables with it, so that's pretty clean. Let's, you know, let's have salad. Kids, come eat. When I take the congen water on the same fruits and vegetables, I get a glass full of pesticides. So they're the same tomatoes out of the same bag living side by side in the same field. This one, you're going to get sick. If you eat these, because these have pesticides, and the EPA allows the farmers to put pesticides in oil because oil and water don't mix. So when it rains or when they spray it, the pesticides don't come off so the farmers can make a profit. However, it's not their problem. If you eat pesticides, it says, hey, caveat emptor, buyer beware, good luck, don't get sick, happy tomatoes, happy trails. That's why they taste bitter and slick. That's what's on there. Here, these are clean because this water will penetrate, pulverize oil. It gets it clean. This machine is not a luxury. You're eating this with every single meal. Strawberries, lettuce, tomatoes, all those things have the same exact thing. And this machine, you push a button, and it makes 11.5 just by pushing a button. That's kind of nice to have. So every time you clean vegetables, it's really getting clean. Now, while she's getting that out of the way, we're going to do one more experiment here. And that is we're going to take four glasses, and I'm going to take tap water and fill up glass number one and glass number three. And then I'm going to take 9.5 Kangen water, and I'm going to fill up glass number two and number four. Now, they all look the same, don't they? But I'm going to show you the power of microclustering in your colon and in your arteries. Now, this is Yamamoto Yama green tea, antioxidant, good for you, tea we drink. But to be fair, to make tea, water is supposed to be hot, right? This is just room temperature water out of this sink about a couple hours ago. But I'm going to take this tea bag, stick it into tap water, and it, nothing. So what you, nothing. I'm not making tea. It's like landing. Uh, I don't get it. I take the same tea bag, put it into congent water, and instantaneously he goes right to work making tea. They say, well, the tea bag was wet. It was all juiced up. It was ready to make tea. It's a trick tea bag. Okay, okay. He knows how to make tea. Let's take him out of here, all making tea, put him back into tap water, and he lost his brain. <laughs> take him out of here and put him back in the water. Suddenly, he grew a brain again. He knows how to make tea. Microcluster molecules, you can't fool it. You can be the biggest, grumpiest, meanest person on earth. It's still going to get you well, whether you like it or not. It's going to get you well. So here, I've got tea that penetrates the water. Here, here I have tea that doesn't work in water. Okay? You have to see this to believe it, what's going to happen, because these are the waters, the tap water and the bottled waters, all do the same thing. They don't make tea. It doesn't penetrate your cellular system. Biological medicine, and we want you to learn this so you can share this with your friends, it goes like this. It says, if you can bring about a shift in a person's pH, making it slightly more alkaline and reduce the state of oxidation in the body, add electrons, and get minerals into the cells, good, 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 is what you're doing, the body can heal itself of anything. That's a huge statement. This is by Dr. Thomas Rao, father of biological medicine. Of all the machines, of all the studies, he does studies where he measures the chronological age and the physical age of people, and he was testing 24, 25, 30-year-old people and found their aging, their chronological age of the body was in their 80s and 90s. They were so acidic. All these tests, their ages now match. 24-year-olds are actually 24 years old again 
after they start drinking this body. The body will heal itself. Now, people say, if this is true, how come I never heard of it? Where's it been? Well, this company has been around since 1974. It's considered a medical treatment device by the Japanese Ministry of Health, which is like our FDA over here. This is used in the top Japanese hospitals. The Japanese Association of Preventive Medicine for Adult Diseases recognizes this as very efficacious. This is the, a body of 6,500 doctors in a nonprofit organization whose only job is to test new technology every year. Which companies have the best machines for all the hospitals? The only machine they pick every year is Enagic's machine. Out of all the knockoffs, they can't do it because they're not medical devices. They don't have the power to do what ours can do. Now, they started, they developed a consumer home model in 1994 and they introduced it in the United States in 2003. And now, I want to show you, of all these awards we have, these three are the ones that prove we're a medical device. They're ISO certificates. It's the same testing that a heart pacemaker has to go through. It's the same testing that aircraft parts have to go to before they can fly human beings. No other company in the world can pass this test. We've done it three times. In fact, our company is so proud, they got the certificate numbers painted on the outside of the building at the factory, just so our competitors can see we're really licensed. Now, if you go to the Internet, our competitors will actually show you fake certificates with numbers that don't exist. When you Google the numbers, it's fake certificates, so it shows you who we're dealing with. Just don't buy it. Now, the machine makes seven different powers of water. When water comes out of your tap and goes through the machine, it's got to add up to 14, the whole pH range. So it's always making two kinds of water, acid and alkaline. While the machine is over here making the 2.5 out of the bottom hose, at the same time, it's making the 11.5 out of the top hose because 11 and a half and two and a half equal 14. It's got to always add up to 14. The 11.5 is the stuff that cleans the tomatoes. That's the stuff that kills hangovers. That's the cleaning water. This is the sterilizing water. Now the next water is called 5.5. It's still in the acidic range, but when the, you push a button, the, the machine says beauty water or sensei in Japanese, and this is 5.5. That's the same that the estheticians put in your skin to tone you up. So after you suck all the oxygen out of the bacteria and dry it up, then you hydrate your face with this water so you don't get dried up, so you stay nice and hydrated, which is why it looks so good. <laughs> That's what this is. <laughs> so as I push the, seven, the 5.5, that's to hydrate my skin, 7.0 is for people that have time-release medication. Time-release medication means I can't take all the medicine right now. I've got to take a pill. It's going to last 12 hours. Remember the tea? When I put the tea in the Kangen water, boom, it turned instant tea. Well, the same thing is going to happen with medication. So you don't want to take your time-release medication with that. You want to take time-release medication with the 7 because it's neutral water. Wait a half an hour, then start drinking the Kangen water to keep your body in the alkaline state, all right? Now, you're going to start drinking 8.5 water. Everybody starts at 8.5. I don't care how big and strong you are. Start at 8.5. Get your body used to it. Go for three or four days. The water in a container like this will last Three days at the most. It's lost its power. So in three days, what's, what you haven't consumed, pour it in your cactus. Your cactus will take over your backyard. Cactus loves this stuff, by the way. Now, after you've consumed 8.5 for three or four days, see if you're detoxing. Lightheaded, headaches, stuff in the gut coming out a little too fast, whatever. Then if you're doing fine, go to 9.0. Do that for a week and then go to 9.5 and stay on 9.5. Some people can't get past 8.5. That's just... That's all they can take. That's just, they get too amped up at 8.5. So find out where your level is. This machine has a filter, which is good for 3,000 gallons. And when it needs a new filter, it'll say, replace the filter. It talks to you. So you don't have to guess how many gallons that I have. It'll tell you, replace the filter. It takes the pollutants out. But now it has seven titanium plates. And here's the difference between us and everybody else. Here's why our machine makes water all day long, ionized, doesn't get hot, doesn't melt, doesn't blow up. It stays a medical device. No matter how much water you make, is because these seven plates have 230 watts of power. So when I take this much water through 230 watts, it separates the hydrogen and the oxygen. It pulls it apart. It takes a lot of power to do that. And now what happens medically is you see this formula, it's called OH minus. That's no longer H2O, that's OH minus. It's called hydroxyl. What's that mean? It means oxygen, hi oh, hydrogen all has one electron going around each hydrogen. Every hydrogen has one electron. When I separate the hydrogen and the oxygen, it's so much power, it pulls all the electrons off the hydrogen, and they come jumping over here with the oxygen. And oxygen already has eight electrons of itself. So now when I add all the hydrogen electrons, I have water that has a huge negative ORP of like seven or 800. You saw that number tonight? That's where it comes from. 
That's medical water. Nobody else can do that. Side by side, their machines melt. Side by side, ours work. Don't be afraid of taking the competitors on head to head. They will lose every time. You will win every time, certificate or not. Now, so this is now called Kangen water going out the top. And with each button you push, it'll add more or less electrons to it to make it more higher or lower pH. This is the acidic water, which is used topically on your body. This is used in the inside. Now, I show this picture because our competitors, I, I have to laugh. We have seven plates that are seven by five inches with 230 watts of power. This is the size of our plates. Inside here, they have what's known as grid technology or mesh technology. Grid technology is another word for a screen. They're using a piece of screen that they run water through a piece of screen with a little hookup that has 85 watts of power. You run 85 watts of power through a screen, and what's going to happen? It's going to melt. It's going to melt. So they have a special technology device called SMPT shutoff valve to keep the machine from overheating or melting. And they say, well, Kangen doesn't have that. Well, of course not. Ours don't melt. <laughs> or I can buy a cheap machine that does nothing, that looks like it, looks like a machine, but doesn't work. And so you can't make a Kmart shopper stop being a Kmart shopper. You're going to buy the wrong machine, and I wish you well, but you've heard the best, and here it is. Now, and the SD501, which goes in the home, has seven plates. It costs $3,980. This is not a Brita. Now, this machine has 12 plates. This is for the restaurants in the uh, higher, like the medical clinics, the acupuncture clinics, the chiropractors are using this. This has 12 plates, and it has two hoses at the top. This is the acid hose. This is the alkaline hose. And places, for example, like Malibu and Santa Monica passed the we have to go green, no more chemicals last year. Well, they did. And so the restaurant owners are going to you nuts. The health department's still in business. We're, we still make germs and bacteria. We're going to get shut down. No, no, no. They're using the acid water out of this big machine to clean the floors, clean the countertops, do all the silverware, no chemicals. This water kills germs on contact. Now, for those people of you who are in the age bracket where you're starting to get age spots or liver spots, that's because your skin, which is normally one twentieth of an inch thick, as you age, it gets thinner. And by the way, each, each square inch of skin has 1,300 nerve endings in it, which I think is an amazing thing. But as you get older, your skin gets thinner. Every time you take a shower in chlorine, your hot, open pores are soaking in chlorine in your skin. Chlorine, once again, is a carcinogen, not good for yourself. But as you get older, your skin absorbs that chlorine. You go out in the sun, and you're like a little sun lamp. Bow! The chlorine just pops out in your face. And so those are age spots, or actually chlorine spots. They put the NS spa together, which takes the chlorine out. It puts ions in your shower and your bath. And Kate, the person who had the mastitis, she just bought this unit. She loved it so much, she's inviting her neighbors over to take a bath and say, just take a bath, take a bath. <laughs> you won't believe it, take a bath. <laughs> and there's, you did, didn't you? That's right. So, and it's wonderful. She's getting one now. So that's $23.90. Now, people say, wow, that's a lot of money. But I told you this had to be affordable or it wouldn't work. It has to be affordable. This machine, in 15 years, you can make all the water you want. I give 20 gallons a day away to my new clients. Try the water, try the water, try the water. It works, 20 gallons, 30 gallons a day. It costs me 73 cents a day, no matter how much money, I, how much water I make. I can give away one gallon or 50 gallons a day, 73 cents a day. Pepsi and Coke are not concerned about your health, they're concerned about their profit. This costs them nothing. You're paying a buck for nothing. They'll have to get sick. So in 15 years, you're going to spend about 3 bucks a day minimum, $16,000. A family at 10 bucks a day is going to spend $54,000, and everybody in this happy picture is going to get sick because they're all drinking acid. Versus here, 73 cents a day. And notice it says eco-friendly. We have an award because we're ecologically sane. We make nothing that pollutes. Nothing in our factory pollutes. Right now, nobody knows how long plastic bottles last. They think 800 years to 2,000 years before they biodegrade. Right now, we're putting 2.5 million plastic bottles every hour in the landfill, and 10% of those are ending up outside in the ocean, outside of Hawaii. There's a little thing you can Google. Hawaiian Islands, plastic bottles. There's a whole bunch of Google sites pop up, and you can go, and it shows you there's an area 2.5 times the size of Texas outside of Hawaii with nothing but swirling plastic bottles about 4 or 5 feet thick. And they actually have videos, people swimming through it and showing it close. The fish are eating the plastic particulates. They're getting sick. The fish population is... We're dying from this plastic. This is banned now in Japan, San Francisco, and New York. It's gone. You can't have them. It's gone.